In the early days of steam, there were two important things to remember when it came to locomotive design. Bigger boilers meant more power, and bigger driving wheels meant more speed. The issue is, the bigger you make one, the less space you have for the other, as the boiler would often be mounted above the driving wheels, and so a balance had to be struck between the two. Logically then, if the size of one restricted the size of the other, then why not mount them separately? Then you could have a big powerful boiler, and big fast driving wheels. Well, some engineers decided to give that a go, with unfavourable results. During his time at the Great Western, Isambard Kingdom Brunel had big ideas about the future of the railway, envisioning high-speed express services sprinting along the line. As the GWR didn't have their own locomotive works yet, in 1836 the company ordered express engines from various railway works across the country, with Brunel providing the following specifications. 1. While moving at 30 miles an hour, the piston must not travel at a rate exceeding 280 feet a minute. 2. The boiler pressure should be 50 psi. And 3. The weight of the engine must not exceed 10.5 tons. These specifications, however, were very restrictive. Not only were more powerful boilers available, but pistons could travel at a much faster rate without issue, and the railway's infrastructure was capable of supporting much heavier machines. As a result, the railway ended up with a vast array of underpowered 222 engines, which had massive driving wheels to keep piston travel low, and small boilers to keep the weight down. With the smaller boilers severely stunting the performance of the other engines, R and W Hawthorne and company thought that rather than sacrifice the boiler size to save on weight, they would instead mount the boiler on a separate carriage. This way, they could have bigger wheels to keep the piston travel low, and a bigger boiler to keep up with their demand. And, because the driving wheels and boiler were on separate frames, the weight was spread out, and so even though it was heavier than Brunel's specifications, it would still have a relatively light axle load. The end result was a massive and very odd-looking machine made up of three segments. The front was essentially a 222 engine without the boiler, being fitted with a pair of driving wheels 10 feet in diameter and 6 tons in weight, and a pair of 16 by 20 inch cylinders. In order to operate the engine, the driver had to be positioned on this carriage. The middle was a six-wheeled carriage that carried the boiler on four-foot, six-inch unpowered wheels, the boiler itself having an impressive heating surface of 516 square feet, with the last wagon being the engine's tender. It was completed in 1838, delivered to the Great Western Railway in October that year, and named Hurricane. Hurricane's size made it a unique spectacle on the railway, with some saying, quote, the engine formed a kind of procession when it passed. Its record-sized driving wheels too came with some impressive performance characteristics, with the engine supposedly averaging 84 miles an hour on a trip between Paddington and Taplow. Along with Hurricane came another engine, Thunderer. Similar in design to Hurricane, Thunderer used an 040 arrangement at the front, with smaller, 6-foot driving wheels. Rather than power the driving wheels directly, the cylinders powered a separate wheel which drove the driving wheels via gear, with the wheels having a gear ratio of 10 to 27. Both engines seemed to be impressive performers at first, but they both had a critical weakness, something I'll touch upon in a second. Only a few years later, in 1846, the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad's chief engineer, Mr. G. A. Nichols, was trying to find a way of running an engine on anthracite coal. The coal needed a large firebox in order to burn, and the boiler Nichols designed would be too big to fit on an engine without getting in the way of the driving wheels. To combat this, he mounted the boiler on a flatbed behind the locomotive, with a steam reservoir in place of the original engine's boiler. He named the engine Novelty, and while the boiler design proved to be somewhat functional, it was greatly let down by its poor drafting. To make matters worse, it also suffered from the same major issue that plagued both Hurricane and Thunderer, lack of adhesion. You see, while a locomotive boiler's primary job is to generate steam, its secondary function is to put additional weight on the driving wheels, pressing them into the rails to help them grip and provide better traction. 
Only a tiny amount of an engine's wheel touches the rail at one time. It's this lack of surface area that allows trains to travel so fast in the first place, but it also means that they struggle to grip the rails when starting or moving. By taking the boiler off the wheels, they no longer had that additional weight crucial for providing them with traction, meaning they lacked the strength to start or effectively move heavy trains. Even though Hurricane's driving wheels were three tons each, the extra weight needed to come from something pressing down on the wheels, not just from the wheels themselves. One can only imagine how tremendous the wheel slip must have been when starting a heavy train on a wet day. You could make the argument that to solve the problem, you could just add a water tank or blocks of scrap metal to provide the extra weight necessary, but that would only increase the overall weight of the entire locomotive, and is somewhat overcomplicating things when just mounting the boiler over the driving wheels is significantly more straightforward. As a result of their lack of traction, both Hurricane and Thunderer were taken out of service in December 1839. Hurricane's boiler was used to build an 060 goods engine named Bacchus, while its 10-foot driving wheels were used as part of a wagon to move a statue. Thunderer, meanwhile, was used as a stationary boiler, with the rest of the engine stripped for parts or scrapped. Over in the States, Novelty's poor steaming and abysmal adhesion also led to its downfall. It was rendered a failed experiment, and just like Hurricane and Thunderer, it was taken out of service about as quickly as it was put in. In the end, Hurricane, Thunderer, and Novelty turned out to be, well, novelties. While mounting the driving wheels in front of the boiler seemed like a good idea on paper, it just goes to show that the old saying about putting the cart before the horse still applies when it comes to engineering. Subscribe for more.